<laughs> hey guys, welcome to Muscle Rose Podcast number 218. I just did one of those and said 118, but I'm like, no, I've been doing that longer than this. Uh, guys, thanks for listening to us. Thanks for telling a friend. We'd love to get more people. Why don't you tell them that, uh, you know, they need to listen to us. They'd love to hear drunks argue about uh, fishing. That's pretty much uh, what we do. You can, get, you can find us on iTunes. You can find us on Musky Road Rules website, all our social media sites, including Musky Hunter Magazine. Uh, and you can also find us on Spotify, uh, iTunes, uh, Apple Music. There's a ton of places you can find us, so make sure you check us out. Tonight's podcast is brought to you by Lax Reproductions. Is it real or is it lax? Guys, I'm looking at a lax reproduction right now, and I'm telling you, I got it 10 years ago, and the thing still looks just as dusty uh, as it did when I got it. (laughs) Um, This baby, no, guys, I'm telling you what, lax does a great job. He's got tons of forms, tons of art. And on the podcast tonight, we got Jeff and Ramar. Jeff, do you know Rick Lax? Yes, sir, I do. He is a bad dancer. That's all. Yeah, I'm man, he does say. a great job. <laughs> He's a bad dancer. Well, you know, it, it, I think you're judging by musky shows, and what happens at musky shows stays at musky shows. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, tell us a little bit about some of the lax reproductions. I know I've uh, I've seen you in his booth a few times. <clears throat> Yep, and you can uh, you can find me there at uh, at the shows again this upcoming season. I've been in the Lax booth there since uh, ever since we got that big tiger muskie back in 2012. Actually, I got to know Rick pretty well prior to that, and then it was kind of the hey, why don't you hop in the booth for the year and and uh, you know and because that fish was going to be there and everybody wanted to see it, and then uh, it worked out really well. And I've been with those guys ever since. Yeah, well, um, I yeah tell he does you a what, fantastic job. I've does. got a house full of them. He's done trout for me. I got a ram looking at right now. I got a big. Got a 38 inch brown trout, a 15 pound steelhead, a, a big 52 inch tiger right here. He's done a lake trout and a, a number of other stuff for me as well. He does a fantastic job. I think you're just bragging because you caught a fish. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I caught a couple today, even through the ice. Oh and, uh, my god! Well, switching gears, baby. Yeah, you don't know what you're missing, you southern boys. You don't. Even I know. know exactly what I'm missing. <laughs> uh, it's it's not a it's yeah. It's, it's I, not I know, for everybody. It's I know not exactly. for everybody. I'll hey. give you that. Hey, I've got uh, – I'm going to be going up, and which actually I can actually say it right now, I guess. Uh, I just uh, two weeks ago closed on a place on Lake of the Woods. Oh, uh, congratulations. Uh, in the northwest angle, I've got a – I bought a, uh, a cabin up there, and, and uh, that will be my new summer home now in the northwest angle. Um, I spent some time in the, north, in the Nestor Falls area this year, and – uh, everything helping them guys out and uh but no i'm gonna be uh guiding out of the northwest angle here uh hopefully it's gonna be uh you know out of the u.s side there from uh mid-june to uh mid uh, late september and uh really looking forward to it um yeah so no that's something new i got going on uh from now and actually i'm gonna be going up there uh, a couple days after christmas so that should be horrible <laughs> And, um, yeah, that's going to be a treat for you. <laughs> well, I mean, it, I mean, it should be great. I mean, most people yeah. uh, go to you know go to Florida, go to Mexico. Not me. I'm going to go to the <laughs> furthest point in the continental U.S. Uh, that's what I want to go see. Um, you got uh, you got snowshoes on your on your Christmas list or what? I've got snowshoes. I got guys. If you don't know that, that's uh, that's not Tony taking uh, you know um, rejuvenation juice there and sounding younger. Uh, it's the voice <laughs> of uh, Ryan McMahon there uh, in in Minnesota. Tony is actually down in Florida right now, and uh, he texted me today. He said I'm on a cruise, and I go well. That I I bet the women are lo- they are loving that. Uh, <laughs> That should be well, just I, beautiful. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to do my best Tony impression here. I'm already messing up. I yeah, exactly. You've already I, pronounced. I it, you've already pronounced every two syllable uh, word right. Um, so <laughs> that's well. Uh, down, you, you guys down there, you guys will take a one syllable word and turn it into like a three syllable word because that whole like you got to chew on it, drawl thing. Yeah, yeah right. You got to right. chew on it while you're saying you it. You guys that's are the, just showing off. It is. It, it definitely is. That's you got to chew on it to make yourself feel good. But guys, again, on this podcast, 
we've got Jeff Ann Remortal from Wisconsin. We've got Ryan McMahon. I, myself, Greg Thomas. Again, tonight was brought to you by Lax Reproductions. Go to Lax. Uh, reproductions.com check those out if you caught your biggest fit and don't you don't even have to catch it this year you could have caught it 10 years ago he'll make up the size he'll make you one it don't matter uh you if you never caught a 50 incher it don't matter just tell him you did if you pay for it he'll make it uh laxreproduction.com guys that's where you want to go go to laxreproduction.com he'll check it out also text us on our text line you can text us at 606-776-6570, 606-776-6570. That's the Lungeon Lures text line, Lungeon Lures. They got the makers of all the fabulous crankbaits, whether it be the 22 short, 22 long, 22 SS, the chubby. They're makers of the new Alley Cat series of baits. They've also got the Tony Grant series of the Rattling Chad. The big old 50 cal, they got a ton of stuff. So check them out at lungeonlures.com and please text it right now. Tony loves pictures because this is actually Tony's cell phone. So you need to text pictures there. Tony loves pictures of skin. So if there's a lot of skin in it, please send it to Tony, especially right now if he's on the cruise. I would love that. I signed Tony up for a lot of mailing lists um, with that number. So please. <laughs> Send him pictures. That would make me so happy. Uh, it'd be an early Christmas gift for me. But uh, guys, what's going on up there up north? Uh, snow. Yeah, Probably Ryan. Snow. Yeah, same deal over here. Did yeah. you guys get that big? You guys had. Uh, yeah, we got pounded today. Did you guys have snow? To, you guys both had snow today, didn't you? <clears throat> yeah, big system. We had it what two days ago too. I mean, it, yeah, it's been kind of. Kind we of caught big. a little piece, and then it, yeah, today was our big schools were canceled, roads were terrible. So, all right, all right, tell me this: what what does it canceled. take in in where you are you are you in Vilas, Jeff, or Oneida? Yep, Vilas County. Yep, I'm right by Minocqua. Yep, North all Central. Right. Yep. So, so Vilas County. What does it take for for old girl to look outside and go, you know what, school's canceled today? What what does that take? Well, we had, uh, I don't know how much freezing rain the evening before, but freezing rain, everything was glare ice. One of those, uh, you open up your car and shut the door and everything shatters and falls, you know what I mean? Like just a crazy gross glaze on everything. And then about eight to maybe 11 inches of snow, depending on where you were here. And it was about Jesus. the heaviest snow that I've ever seen up here in the 12, 13, 14, however many years it's been that I've lived here. Um, it's been, it was, you know, usually it's cold, right? So you don't get that heavy, but it was like that 31 and a half degrees outside and snowing. And that kicked in at about one, 2 AM here and, and fell at about an inch an hour till daybreak. And then by about seven, eight o'clock, it was, it was done, but it was, it was kicking pretty good. Ah, maybe like midnight, one o'clock it started. And that was on top of that ice. And yeah, just a, not a good travel scenario all around. Um, we were actually supposed guys, to film a, film a show yep. today too for ice fishing. And just, I just called it off. It was just that on top of thin ice and, just it was looking pretty bad. And today turned out to actually be a pretty beautiful day. Great day if you're a kid and had a snow day. This was it, man. Making snowman with the kids and forts in the yard. But trying to shovel it and move it anywhere was uh, whew, not great. Ugh. What'd you say, Ryan? In the roads, roads. Well, also I was bad. gonna say they probably have uh, their school districts probably pretty big geographically speaking. So you probably get buses Correct. traveling yeah. a long distance. I mean, in, in the different cities Very here. Useful. We had some school districts canceled, some didn't, you know. But yeah, yeah it was it was kind of yeah, sloppy you're, you're here. On. How, much, well, how much? Like you said, how much? How much snow did you way. get? Ryan? It was gross. What's that? How much snow did you guys get there in Minneapolis? Oh, it it's hard to tell. It was it's so sloppy and wet. I mean, I don't know. I snow blowed maybe three four inches this morning, and then uh, or midday, I guess. And then yeah, and then it, I don't know. There's probably another couple inches out there. I'm just I'm just gonna ignore it till tomorrow. That's yep. <laughs> smart. That's mm-hmm. the that's the best thing. Now, if we'd have had that much snow, where you're, we would have, it would have been a state of emergency. Uh, buy milk, buy bread, and uh, <laughs> don't come out of your house because the white death will kill you. Uh, you know, I will tell you, I uh, in 2019 we went down to Texas and did a crane hunt, and it was colder there than it was here. And it was January. It was like 11 degrees, nine degrees in Texas, and they had that big snowstorm down there. If you remember that. Mm-hmm. And I was there during the heart of that. And I'll tell you right now, you know, coming from a place with snow, it was, you know, you always laugh at people. Oh, a couple inches of snow, the world's going to end. But, man, they just are not equipped to deal with any of that stuff down there. And there is no, 
nothing on no, you know, everybody's got basically bald tires, you know, because there's never any ice or anything. <laughs> and, and they can't afford the and they can't afford stuff. tread. Let's, let's be real. <laughs> That so, might be part of it, but it was, I'm telling you, there it's, are more it's, cars it's in by, the ditch. Yeah, there it's by, it's more by cars. tires There's nothing for the, to remove the snow. Buy tires for the crazy. car or the house. And yeah. you, yeah, oh, I trust Definitely me. a different world. You know, they got no salt. They got nothing. I mean, it was, you know, four or five, whatever inches of snow, and the whole world shut down. Granted, it was a little bit of that glazed ice, too. Kind of a similar deal to what we had today, but with significantly less snow. But you would have thought the world was coming to an end, and people sure drove like it was. It was a bad deal. But, I like the guys from down yeah. south. They got the big fancy souped up trucks and everything, and then and then you go look at them. Well, they're two wheel drive trucks. <laughs> yeah, two wheel drive trucks with <laughs> garbage tires. That's not even a truck, man. It's a, yeah. I've got expensive. a four wheel drive. I don't know how to drive it, but I've got a four wheel drive. <laughs> got to have that. Yeah, you might need it well, one of these days I'll learn how to drive. I think it's going to be uh, probably right after Christmas this year when I'm driving uh, through Sprig. Um, is probably mm. when I'm going to learn how to use it. But uh, <laughs> let's talk here a little bit, Jeff. What, uh, you know, the season's over up there in Wisconsin. Everybody's done. They got their boats put away. Or if you're Luke Ronestrand, it's filling up with snow. Um, what, uh, how was the year 2022 Northern Wisconsin? You know, it was good. Um, I think a lot of people had a tough year from what I heard, but we were able to be pretty consistent. We had a lot of nice fish in the boat. We did get, you know, you try to shoot for, if you can get, in northern Wisconsin, if you can get one, like, true bump board 50 a year, you're doing pretty good. I like to get, uh, like, did, a sewing we, tape 50. Yeah, right. Oh, you know, the floating stick or the eyeball it, you know, just add a couple inches. And I a like good a good of Bob well. Masacomer so we, we really cut the right. line. Bob Masacomer cut the line at the top, pull it straight <laughs> around the Well, then the you got to cut the... Then you cut the video too. You you do the line. I put it around the butt the video. seat. I actually pull it down, wrap it around the butt seat, and down to the bottom, and then measure it. I prefer to just not even measure it and lose it and call it sixty inches. That that's actually that's actually <laughs> too soon. Too soon. No, that's no. You get that's, a lot of mileage on that. No, that's that's oh, perfectly yeah. fine with me. <laughs> no, but overall, man, our season up here, it was good. We did good here. I, I spent a little bit of time on Green Bay. We did well out there. It was a tougher year out there than normal. With uh, We had a big wind out there that was, that was pretty well talked about. I think a lot of people can agree it's probably one of the tougher seasons in general on that body of water in particular just because we had a big wind that pushed a lot of the warm water out. Water went from 72 degrees to uh, a, a balmy 55 to 57 degrees basically overnight. Uh, and once that cold water was into that lower bay system there, blew all the warm water out, and the cold water came down from the north, and, man, that was like uh, a ball of death out there. You know, the the cold water would roll up onto wherever you're fishing, and everything would just scatter, everything. Walleyes, bait fish, the muskies, and that really uh, that really played havoc with a lot of people's program down there. We still managed to eke out a few, hitting some of those nooks and crannies that have, you know, found out their duck hunting and some of the stuff that's a little bit away from the – the general populace and just good old fashioned grinding it out along with everybody else that was in the mix out there guiding, you know, you got some pretty good anglers out there and everybody was in the same boat. We talk, talk to a lot of those guys on a pretty daily basis when I'm down there and it was just tough all around. And, and then things finally leveled oh, out Jeff. later in the year down there, but um, no, Jeff, it was a good time, year overall. What time of year are you on green Bay? That's more like an August, September thing, you know, a little bit of that late July too, but that like late July and into early August was when that happened. I mean, up until about the middle of August this year, it was really tough sledding out there. Um, wow, that's, and that's conversely, cool water. And co- yeah, yeah, right, yeah. I mean, you talk, the coldest I saw was 53 and a half. 53 and a half. And that's launching, I mean. There was shrinkage. Yeah. There was shrinkage. You could just feel it coming off the water. You know, it's kind of funny. <laughs> I was talking to a walleye guy the day before. He was coming in. He was fishing out. You know, he's about, I don't know, he's out in the mud flats fishing walleyes out there. And he's like, yeah, I had like, you know, 57, 58 degree water. And I'm just looking. I had my dad out. We actually did a little walleye fishing that day. I took him out. And, and then we musky fished for an hour or two. And I looked at my dad. and I'm like, oh, whatever that guy's talking about, like 50, 50 degree water. I mean, it's 73 degrees here, 72 degrees, you know. I'm like, whatever, maybe. And then like the next day, all that water made its way in. It was all part of a, It was like a heavy west wind, a heavy west and a little bit of salt pack there that just, just, I mean, it was ripping, you know, really, 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 really windy for like two, three days and three, four days. It just pushed it all out of there, which is not uncommon, but that was certainly an extreme example. And that was about the most, about the most cold water I've ever seen come down 
in like that. We get a little bit of that in the fall. I'm out there every day for duck season too for about 45 to 55 days in a row, give or take there in the fall. And, and we see a lot of those water fluctuations that way too. So it's something I'm familiar with, but man, that was, uh, that was something, but, uh, you know, you adapt, you overcome and you, you make it work. So, uh, we did. Well, good deal. What was, uh, so did you have like, a uh, a pattern or a color or anything like that, that, that kind of, um, was the best for the season for you? Yeah. You know, this year <clears throat> we did, we, you know, you get your standard, your bucktail bite, and your jerk bait bite and all that. The SRJs were really a huge producer for us. Again, the slow rise jerk bait from pandemonium tackle. Um, I've known Kevin for a, a good number of years now, and that, that bait has been pretty indispensable in my arsenal. I know they've been hard to get for all the folks on the wait list and stuff. Um, through TRO, I know they, I, I know he had a nice order and that showed up there and I think they were sold in 22 minutes or something like that. He said they were gone pretty much immediately. Um, and, uh, I, I know it, it's just, he will have some at the shows this year. I don't know if there's any more shipments coming of those. I do get asked about those a lot, but that was one, that is one bait that has been, uh, uh you know, on, on the water and the, on the rod and in the water pretty much every day, depending, unless we're fishing deeper or something, it, it's definitely a shallower running jerk bait, pull pause bait. Uh, dive rise, a dive rise bait, I guess is how you classify it. But how that, would you, that was, uh, how, that's you really know, a, been a, a bait a good like producer. that, a bait like that. How do you normally fish it? Just, it's just like it sounds, you know, pull pause, dive rise. You know, you really can't, you can pop it and twitch it if you really want to do some short erratic stuff. Um, that's how Kevin works at Kevin, uh, Abendroth, the, the owner, he, the guy that makes them, he, that's, he likes to really snap it and pop it with really short pulls. Um, but honestly, you know, just, I kind of tell my customers, you know, it's it's like, don't overthink it. The people who do the best with it in my boat, I mean, it's something you can give to somebody who's like not a strong caster, not a strong musky angler and just give it nice, you know, pretending you give it to your grandpa or your, or your dad or whatever that just doesn't really musky fish and say, here, just pull this and reel up the slack, pull this, reel up the slack. It's, it's a really simple bait. Um, and it's got a nice wobble and in, in, in the, in a real slow rise. And, and it just seems to get bit a lot, especially over cover. I mean, you're not getting down any deeper than two, three feet. It's nothing, Nothing oh, super wow. crazy in there. It's uh, really, you can't overthink it. And it gets bit a lot. So that was one. Hmm. And then, um, of course, you know, the bucktails and stuff, various bucktails and that. Um, but yeah, that was, that's probably, that was probably the standout this year. I mean, again, we caught a lot of fish on rubber. Uh, there's also a bait that's coming out. I'm not sure if, if I'm allowed to talk about it or not. Talk about it. Um, yeah. There's one coming out from innovations that I helped design that uh, is going to be, that was, that was a good one too. We did catch a lot of fish. Uh, on similar baits to that or something in that category, of course, over the years. But there's one coming out from there that what is keep your it? eye open for it. I, well, I can't. I don't, I don't, you can you'll, tell. You'll Brett, good Lord, he's bald. You can tell it. <laughs> um, well, like I said, I he's did. He's trying uh, to sell them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it'll. you'll hear plenty about it uh, in, the, in the time to come here. But, yeah, it. Uh, I caught some nice fish on that this year. And uh, that the pattern where I typically use that bait a lot more, I just, I just didn't have – I didn't fish in that respect as much this year, and when that bite was absolutely on fire, I was down on Green Bay. What does so it rhyme with? So it was something with? I didn't get to use. It rhymes with Uber. Well, that's just <laughs> obnoxious. Old Mother Hubbard. <laughs> My, <laughs> Mother Hubbard. Hubbard. Yeah, no, it's uh, but that's uh, it's a well-designed bait. It's got the uh, it's it's well, definitely you uh, it, of course. Well, yeah, but it, it's just you know the paint jobs are are, are exceptional, like that company is uh, is known for. I mean, it yeah, it's a fish they catcher. Do a nice so. job. Well, yeah, let's, they, let's yeah. take a little break here, and let's do a little – we can do a little ad thing because they are a sponsor. We can talk about musky innovations. Apparently, they're making a top-secret lure that we can't talk about, but uh, <laughs> they're also known for the – you know, they you know they make the bulldogs. They, shit, they've got those up from two pounds all the way down to the micro dogs. All kinds of stuff, all kinds of colors. And the cool thing about musky innovations is they do have, like Jeff said, um, you know, the, the, they're able to put – uh, crankbait paint jobs on soft plastic baits, which is something that uh, they've kind of led the market in here in the last few years uh, in doing. And uh, not only that, but, uh, you know, as far as baits go, they've got, you know, the shallow uh, invader, both in two different sizes. They've got uh, the swimming dog in both the regular and the shallow. They've got the dying dog that some prick made that, uh, you know, also has all kinds of, uh, colors and jerk baits and 
and, and stuff. So uh, check it out there. You know, Muskie Innovations, muskieinnovations.com. It sounds like they're going to have something <clears throat> new uh, at the sports shows this year. So, guys, make sure you Yeah, check I think out. so. I think it's going to be planned for release for this year. I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure if it I, – I, I think so. I would think it so. Is? I don't well, know if I'm going to text it. him right now if I could find my phone. Well, you know, it's a little payback, Greg. Back in the day when you were making the Dying Dog, I was trying my darndest to get my hands on one of those because I was like, I really like the action. I like the design. I was like, I got to try this thing out. And I couldn't get one to save my life. So, well, that's because you know? Brad's a sneaky bastard. Uh, <laughs> a sneaky man. And that's, oh, that's, yeah. what, uh, but, uh, that's what he does. Yeah, actually, my biggest, our biggest fish in northern Wisconsin this year, that, uh, that 50 uh, that we caught uh, – there and i think it was his uh biggest musky by a long shot and then he had a really nice another one that day too a nice like a 43 inch male too and then uh that big one and that was those are both on bulldogs nice well. well i tell yeah, you what catch, you can't it's it, they've been around since uh i think 93 i met brad in 90 yeah. uh in 95 uh back when his buddy disco dave was around and he was a bad disco dancer dave too. and uh it was, uh, yeah, no, all uh, all good stuff. Ryan, you got anything good to say about uh, your year in 2022? Or, um... Well, I mean, a couple things. I, well, actually, I was just daydreaming here about uh, innovation states. And uh, I, you know, back in the day when, when the Double Dog first came out, I had a – had a really good time with those, and then I don't know, maybe a couple of years where where you know we weren't catching as much on them. But man, this was a good year with the double dog. We caught some nice fish on on double dogs this year, so that's that's one to think about too. If you don't have one of those, or if well, you, you know the thing about for a bit. the thing about the double dog, you know, it's funny because you make about the f- third person that we've had on the podcast this fall that have talked about the double dog. And, oh, no kidding. Yeah, and that's the thing. You know, Luke talked about it. We had Ben Knutson um, last week on. He talked about the double dog. And, and you know, it's, it, it truly is. It, it's one of those baits that uh, it doesn't sink quite as fast as the regular dog, so you can work it shallower. And it, it's one that you don't hear guys talk about a lot. And I think it actually catches quite a few fish. And, um, but guys don't really do a lot of uh, talking with it. What, where did you find it being most effective for you, Ryan? Well, so back in the day, um, well, now I feel like I always got to give my, my buddy Dave Seely a shout out. He was kind of the one that, that he, he was when they first came out. So you had kind of the old China double dogs, right? They had the little tentacle things coming off the side and we used to pop yeah. those things off right away. Um, I've but, got some, I still have some of the old China dogs that look like somebody had airbrushed a queef on the head of them. I mean, it was absolutely the weirdest thing I th- I had ever seen. Um, I am so glad that, uh, Man, you, you paint a picture with that. Uh, <laughs> that was, uh, all right, everybody wow. close, close their eyes. It's story time. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I just, I think I, yeah, I think I smelled that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no i was gonna say though uh those ones i look like so those old ones those ones do sink more especially when you take the cut those side little tentacles off but yeah they're uh, a little heavier they are and they yeah they'll they'll dry off a little quicker but just like straight retrieving them with a couple of little poles in it you know here and there and that used to be a real good fall thing and it, it's kind of funny because it's like oh like now you think you know there's all these nice swim baits out there now and and you look back and you're like, well, wait, like we were just fishing them as swim baits, you know, but, but no, we, so we, we caught a few fish doing that this year on weed edges, but, uh, um, just throwing them in open water, um, you know, late June, early, early July. Um, and not really, not so much ripping them, but kind of, uh, kind of just like long poles and then long drops. Um, that was, that was a pretty strong bite, uh, there for a little while. Got a couple of nice fish. Now was um, that, <laughs> Sorry, um, do you? It's not, I feel like I feel like we got Tony on the podcast. No, right now. no, no. I'm sorry, I think I'm actually catching. I don't know if I've caught the flu or have the flu or have a cold. I don't know what I got right now. I'm gonna uh, scrub my phone down at the end of this. Exactly. I just. I, I all I know is I started drinking at six, so that to me is the best oh. way to get rid of it. Um, it is. You got to knock that shit out right away. Exactly. So the. With that, I mean, are you doing that in the in the summer, the fall? I mean, that long pull, so it's kind of a slower retreat. Yeah, yeah. No, when they're out in the basin, you know, like late 
late June, early July sure. uh, was kind of the time frame this last year. And we had a late spring, you know, I'm sure. Yeah. You guys had two job. I mean, it was, it, it felt like, uh, I don't know. I felt like early July we had kind of stuff going on that probably should have been happening. Like basically the second half of June. Yeah, like uh, a two-week pretty... delay, it seemed to be with yeah. everything this year. The steel had a little bit even, even with the ducks a little bit. Everything just kind of this year, about a two-week two week delay. That's got to be two. nice when you can – I mean, like steelhead, that, I mean, that, that shit's got to be like clockwork, ducks as well. I'm I'm always like, oh, like, oh, we like the hummingbirds at the feeder were a little bit late or like, you know. Like, <laughs> I never, like, I like, I like never noticed really my unofficial... hummingbird feeder. <laughs> no. I always got really unofficial, uh, you know, just kind of like barstool talk that I use for my the, timing. But... The dogwoods. Did you see the, <laughs> the dogwoods? Dog but tell me, Greg, when did the dogwoods bloom? The dogwoods, those cocksuckers, they bloomed <laughs> late. And it was... Uh... <laughs> About two did you weeks. steal that from like a Rascal Flat song or something? I did <laughs> actually. Actually, that's from an old um, George Jones. Uh, mm. George Jones song. You old softy, you. Exactly. Exactly. If you ever get south of Cincinnati, I think that's a. Is that a Dwight Yoakam? I know Dwight Yoakam. That is. That, but... that is a Dwight Yoakam song. He's from Pikeville. Hey. Uh, right, and I, doesn't he sing about dogwoods in that song too? He does. He does. If you ever get south God of Cincinnati, damn, I'm, I'm very proud of you, Ryan. That is. I can't I, miss. I might have just earn myself another beer here. Yes, um. yes you might. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah. um, no, it was. Uh, it, I thought it was definitely an off year. Um, in the South, we started off pretty good. Uh, in March, you know, we started out high water, but that just <laughs> seems to be normal for us right now. Um, and then uh, April is when I kind of seen our year kind of get screwed up because of the cold um, that extended um, quite a ways. I mean, we had, I mean, we had literally snow flurries um, every every week in April um, down here, and it extended into May, and then it finally just got warm. Um, and so I, I definitely think that was something that affected us down here this year and, and with the season, but, uh, uh, Jeff, what, uh, besides the SRJs, anything else that you, you noticed that was kind of, uh, really productive for you guys? You know, early on, you know, we talked about the delayed spring and the small bait pattern was really huge for us again this year. I had, in fact, one of my better days in the month of June, I was just looking back through some pictures here to kind of get a. Um, you know, just kind of as we're talking here and, uh, yeah, we had a really good day on you know, the old maps number five, man. I had, uh, I had a guy and a, a repeat customer of mine, Matt and his, uh, his dad, Glenn come and we had moved a bunch of fish, you know, throwing more traditional stuff out there. to lake. I fish a fair bit. And, and, uh, you know, we had, uh, we had seen a lot of fish, but I think I fished it maybe the day before or whatever, but it was just a half day trip. He and his dad's dad's not a real big musky fisherman and stuff. So it's kind of perfect to be able to hand him a spinning rod and, and he, he pounded three. He got a, a nice tiger, like a 35-inch tiger, thirty something about a three-foot tiger. And then I think he had a 37 and a 39 or a 41 um, also. And, uh, you know, he landed all three fish, got bit three times. I think we got bit one other time. I mean, it's just a four-hour trip. And, uh, you know, th- and we had just about everywhere we had been going, you know, with throwing a little bit bigger stuff, even stuff up to, like, you know, your number seven um, or the Marvins or the, or a Booker tail or whatever, 700 series, you know, seven, number seven, Indiana, single bladed stuff like that even just seemed a little too big. Like they didn't, and it was like, you could almost set your watch to it. You know, you just go, you're getting follows on that stuff and you downsize a little bit further. And that's something I've going back to when I was 10, 12 years old throwing that we, we just threw maps number fives on a, you know, a little bit heavier duty spinning rod. And that is something that we crushed a lot of fish on back then and still do today. I mean, it's one of those things people look at you a little funny, you know, as a musky guide, and they show up, and you're like, well, and, but I fished with Matt enough times, and he's like, yeah, that's what you say, you know, that's what we'll do, and sure enough, and Matt was throwing, and he's a good angler, and his dad was up there just crushing it, and his dad, you know, who doesn't musky fish, of course, like, oh, this isn't so hard, you know, <laughs> just, <laughs> sure. just up there loving it, you know, and again, you're talking like first, you know, this is, you know, first week of June time frame, you know, so that's pretty early, our season opens Memorial Day weekend. Um, no, I, I totally. So, you know, that uh, kind of stuff, it. you know, maybe, maybe second, it was like maybe June 10th ish, somewhere in that neck, neck of the woods. But, but again, with the delayed spring and stuff, I mean, our walleye spawn was really late here too. Everything kind of held on. And then, and then it kind of sped up and warmed up pretty quickly, um, you know, kind of pushed it up into the 60s there 
um, relatively quickly uh, once things did start warming up, but it just, the fish still just seemed to be kind of on that, on that routine. And, and quite frankly, this year, I think our, our spawn, at least on most of the lakes got done pretty quickly with the muskies, which was nice. Our fish were holding good body weight. Um, that one, that the 50 that we did get in Northern Wisconsin, um, it was, uh, earlier in the year there too. That was like middle of June, maybe second week of June, somewhere in there. And, uh, or second, third week of June, and uh, that was about as heavy of a 50 as, you know, you, you could expect to catch up here. I mean, as far as, uh, you know, with the exception of, you know, getting into October, November, you know, but it was it was a really well-built fish. It did not look like a, a recently spawned, you know, fish. And maybe it could have been one that skipped a spawn or something. It wasn't quite that porky where it was like dumping eggs. I've caught a couple of those over the years, but it was a really nice, I don't remember the girth on it offhand here, but I know I've got it written down, but I want to say it was like, 22 and change maybe 23 it was a really hefty fish it's a damn good girth for that time of year yeah yeah. it really is it did not i mean you hold it and it had the fat rolls down the back i mean it was a dandy of a fish i can look and see I don't, know if I, I don't know if I I know I've got it written down but it, either way it was it I was like a how, very like very those, very well built fish for that time of year those scanny um, fish a lot of times when they when they're a little porkier and you get the guys like those older fish you can see yeah. if you look on the bottom hand if a lot of times if the light hits just right you can see like it's like ribs or something or like the you kind of get like that ripple. You know what I'm talking about? It's just like fat ripples in them because yeah, they look, yeah. they're going to pop. Like they just they get our fish when they slow down like that. They do tend to pack on a lot like, more of that weight. Like and this Tony was one of those type of fish. <laughs> yeah, get that nice like uh, seared look to it. Seared. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's, I, yeah, always, I've seen yeah, that. No, they they do. They get that that fat. That just it's just a real dense fish. You know what I mean? They just they they're really poor. But it was not. You know, typically you catch them in June, and yeah, they're a little thinner, especially if it's a, if we get those years where it's a a warm up, cool down, warm up, cool down. Especially if it's fluctuating right in and out of that spawning temperature, those fish tend to. It's, it, I think they're just not eating well. They're they're more concerned with the spawn and they can't get through it. But boy, when the water temperatures hit those those magic you know that magic digits there, and those fish started to go it stayed nice and sunny and stable for a number of days in a row. And I think a lot of those fish were just able to get through it really quickly. We did not see the number of beat up, you know, stressed fish from, from the spawn, you know, that we would normally see up here, at least not in my opinion. Did you we have had, a good super... And it was, and it carried through all the way through all the year. Any of those years where you get those fish through the spawn in a really relatively quick fashion, you, you're setting yourself up for a year of fish that'll carry good weight all the way through. Did you, uh, did you think the fish up there, um, spawned later retained some eggs um or just was what there might have been some of that i by us you know it's so system dependent because we have so many lakes of so many different varying sizes and depths and makeups you know if if those real deep lakes are always a hard one you know especially if things warm really quickly sometimes they just won't do it i mean you see with the walleyes too where it's like man the walleye spawn's been done for a month why is this fish still melting you know what i mean it's just you, you'll get some of those late comers or catching you know, fish with that. The, the muskies are, are no different. And one of the probably the best examples of that we have here are, are steelhead um, for our stuff. And I know it's not something everybody fishes and we're talking about muskies, but it's one of those things that I've pursued since I was a kid. And, and it's one of those things where like those fish are geared when they come into the tributaries to spawn. And there's a certain time frame during which they're supposed to spawn, right? A water temperature or a, or a time of year, you know, basically that late March through you know, mid April, but you know, then you get years where it's a little cooler and you'll have fish with eggs coming up into those tributaries well into May. Now it's not a lot. It's not the bulk of the run, but you'll have fish coming in trying to spawn well into, into May, which is way past when anybody really thinks there's anything there. You carry that into muskies or any other species of fish. It's really the same thing. You're going to have fish that come late. You're going to have fish that come early. You're going to have fish that are there during, you know, the bulk of it. Um, and I, and I think that's really one of those things where you do get those ones that, that hold their eggs and it's very system dependent, but I would say overall, I think everything got through pretty quickly, pretty clean, cleanly this year when it finally got going. Um, and it carried right through cause our water temperatures kind of jumped right up and then they kind of stayed up, not like up, up, but like they didn't hover in the low fifties or, or anything like that for very long. They kind of hopped right into the mid to upper fifties, low sixties, and then they kind of stayed there and built, um, more so than years past, which is a good thing in terms of getting the muskies through the spawn across the board. Sure. All right. Well, since we're getting close to Christmas here and um, end of the year and everything, what uh, question for both you guys, what would be one thing that you would suggest somebody maybe uh, picking up for next year, whether it be a, you know, uh, you know, a product of some type, something you've seen this year that was, 
um, that you thought helped you out or, you know, um, something you think would better? What about you, Jeff, and then Ryan? Well, selfishly, I will take it, the opportunity to say, I would say, a subscription to Muskie Academy. <laughs> there you go. That's uh, Yeah, there you go. So that's something we've been working on, our, my partner, our business partner and I, and, and that's been that's come a long way. It's done really well for us this year in, in terms of, like, getting people in the group and uh, and helping people out. And it's, there's 200-some videos there of all all put together in a dichotomous key of breaking down by season, by season, by bait type, by lake type. I mean, everything you could want to know about muskies, and it's all right there at your disposal 24-7. Um, and you couple that with the uh, with the members-only group. I put up weekly reports during the entire muskie season, as well as, um, you know, answer any questions people have on the material or, or anything muskie fishing related that they don't find either in the program or something that's a bit more timely. So you kind of mix in that large catalog catalog of, of informational um, you know, educational type stuff on learning about mossies. And then you add in basically a, a consulting service, if you will, I guess, in terms of uh, trying to tweak it to make it work for where you're at. We've got members from, I think we're up to nine States um, in there. And uh, man, a lot of the guys in the group have been incredible at putting in feedback as well. So if you're interested in that, you can check out muskyacademy.com for more on that. Ryan. <clears throat> well, that, by the way, that's very cool, Jeff. That's, uh, yeah, yeah. I appreciate that, Ryan. Thank you. We've had, we've had a lot of nice feedback on it, and it really means the world to me. I mean, we put, I put a lot, a lot, a lot of time into that, and really is no, about I, just uh, helping people what, helping people do better. And I will say also that, you know, it's, none of, it's not the front end loaded where people are paying me to, you know, promote baits and any of that kind of nonsense and then trying to charge people to hear about it. It's not that at all. I have no sponsors for that. There is zero dollars coming in from ad revenue, and that's by design. I've had plenty of people offer. I've had a number of relatively larger people in our industry say, Hey man, we'd like to, and like, it's just not what it is. You're basically paying for the ad free experience. So you get honest feedback on it. I don't want that stuff to be tainted. And I mean, if, if anything ever changes with that, I'd be, you know, that'll be very publicly known, but it's all, it's as unbiased as it possibly can be. And I, I try to keep it on the, on the even keel that way. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, I think Greg and I both, you know, have been doing different, you know, musky schools and different things to, you know, try to get information out to people, and this just seems like a, another good way to do it. And, yeah, and, agree. Uh, and you guys, that, have, yeah. I've had, I've had several customers that have been to, to your stuff as well, and I think that's a tremendous thing that you guys do over there as well. I think that's awesome. Sure, sure, but no. To answer your question, Greg, I, um, uh, I would probably say uh, the Thorn Brothers. I, I just, I <laughs> haven't talked to the fellows over at the shop here for a, a week or two, but I know they just kind of released. Uh, some stuff about their stealth rods um and i don't know exactly what they're saying about them yet or whatever but i they got a 10 footer um and just knowing some stuff about you know how they were doing them before and how they're doing them now um i this 10 foot stealth rod that the thorns has got i mean this is a game changer this thing's gonna be um have you, you thrown know, one it's gonna be what well, i haven't but i i i know what they're doing with them and it's going to be, it's going to be awesome. I mean, I, um, I, I have, I mean, I, I've used their predators that are, are 10 footers, you know, and they're just, uh, for my liking, they're a little heavy in the butt end and that type of thing. And, and I'm just really, really excited to, um, kind of get away from that, that extra weight in the butt end, um, and, and use these new stealth rods. So that's gonna That's going to be one, I think, uh, I think they're going to have a hard time keeping those things on the shelves. And I think they're going to be booked out for a long time building those suckers. So, um, is that a like full I, line of rods, Ryan, or is it just the 10 footers that they're making in that series? I am not exactly sure what all is going to be offered. I mean, it's a 10 foot blank. So I'm okay. Oh, it's, it it's the blank is the, okay. I got yeah. You. Yeah. So, um, like I said, I'm not sure cool. what's being said and what's not being said. And, and I'm not even sure I'm half talking out of my, my rear here as well, but no. Let's it's, spread it's rumors. Be... I love it. Oh yeah, well yeah. Like I said, I'm gonna go grab another beer here in a little bit. Circle back here in a minute. I might have some really good stuff for you. Um, but no, um, I, I mean all the all the usuals though, baits wise. I mean, um, I don't know. We had a good year with the musky frenzy stuff, of course. Um, Kramer Brothers wood ticks were good. Um, you know, the innovations, like I said, the double dogs were great. Hey, that wood uh, tick ended up winning the PMTT. I know. I, I, dude, that is. Dude, that's a badass lure, man. Well, and like, <clears throat> what's funny is like. Is that named after always... you or an experience you had in in scouts um, <laughs> or anything? 
No, well, yeah. One time, Mike had the that would be called the chigger from me. if it was yeah. if it was the scout experience. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, that that bait, it's uh, it, it's a sneaky bait because like I was actually this year like usually we just crush in September and it was and this goes with the theme of like everything being like a, a couple weeks late, which I felt I always feel like like once you get to like the cool down like late summer early fall like. If you, whether you had a late year earlier or whatever, it just seems like it all kinds of kind of sinks up and yeah, and, resets and greed. Yeah, but this year it was like I was like kind of like wondering why they weren't biting the wood tick as good, you know, and in September, and then all of a sudden like the first week of October, we just had like it was like the week of the wood tick and everything was yeah eating wood ticks in in shallow like fish that had been shallow and like seen Cannonball Juniors seen you know, every bucktail on the bow. And then all of a sudden it's like, no, we're just the only thing we're going to, only thing we're going to play with is a wood tick. So I don't know it, but yeah, every year, man, it's, I just feel like I get streakier and streakier every year. And it's like, whenever you're on that hot streak, like whatever bay you're on, like you better just like, don't ask questions and just ride it out ride that wave as, as long as you can. Cause, sure. uh, is that what Patrick gonna... Swayze said in point break? Ah, damn it. I was hoping you, I can't get anything past you, can I? <laughs> I knew it was him or Keanu, um, <laughs> or it was Bet Midler, <laughs> but that was Beaches. Um. <laughs> uh, I think to your point, Ryan, I think that's a really good, that's something that's an observation I've had two years this last, you know, these last year or two years, as it's been harder and harder to find, you know, baits that everybody doesn't have immediately. I mean, I think it, things do get a lot streakier, I think, because the fish, musky fishing is kind of musky fishing again. You know what I mean? We've had a lot of years where those really tremendous baits, you know, like double cowgirls and, and medusas or, you know, or bulldogs prior to that and, you well, know, lake uh, X let's, stuff, let's, you know, like let, how you had these lures it. come out that just crushed fish, you know, and they just, and they still catch a lot of fish. They all do, but it's just like the fish kind of know what's going on more. You well, know, they get exposed let, let, to that stuff more. I, I'm just here. I'm going to jump in. I'm raising my hand. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> Greg, we'll get with you in a minute here. Hold on. The, uh, yeah. the, I mean, there's just not, I mean, there is options, but there's not. Does that make sense? There's um, like not, it's like, it's really hard to find something that's, new yeah. like a totally new category of bait where and that at least in the way that it like except again, for what like you said, did those are such huge examples of where like about. it didn't matter you could throw them and fish just ate them yeah no you know i mean, I mean? like because they hadn't seen it before and, and now it, there's enough out there that everything's kind of similar enough that they've seen something sort of similar to it and i you know going back to your double dog example i think i've got a buddy up here that lives and dies by the double dog he's done well he's won several tournaments throwing them uh one of them one of the pmtt's i think they won throwing it some would say um, he double dog dares you he double dog dared him oh, but he dude. he's always been the guy that you know he wants to throw that double it's dog versus dude. everybody else throwing a medusa or a regular bulldog and he does extremely well with it i think there's something to be said especially well, when fish heavily pressured water where it's a different profile it's got a little different vibe you can work it a little differently um you know so i, I, I think that's just one example of many there honestly I always look at, uh, you know, like I, I call it the Lake X phenomenon, you know, like, like here you got a tail bait, right? Prop bait. Right. Okay. They've been around since like the beginning of time for top right. water bait, you know, in the muscular. The mud puppies, Wayne the top Wayne, raiders, Wayne, yeah, to, you Wayne name Gooch it. Gooch was out there just whittling away. And, you were uh, just trying to find a way to slip to in. Gooch, the yep. name Wayne Gooch, weren't you? Exactly. Are just you kidding me? I had one of the best, the not, best nights of my life having Wayne Gooch explain to me um, his history of the world in uh, Herman's Landing <laughs> one night, which was awesome. This sounds like a spiritual experience. It here. was. I there mean, was peyote. There was an eagle. Was it peyote, ayahuasca, the whole deal. It was <laughs> The full, was, he had the full it, Rogers. The it, full was, Rogers. It, was, it was great. There was a Ouija board. I was, Jeez. I loved it. <laughs> so there was like life before the Wayne Gooch talk, and then life after. The Ex- Wayne Gooch talk. Ex- exactly. Okay. There, there is AWG and BWG. Um, <laughs> that is Jeepers. That is that's how I look at it. Um, <laughs> well, that's how I'm looking at it now too, buddy. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Uh, but no, I mean, getting back to the, the lake, I mean, I, I would agree. I mean, every year it's like, oh, like, you know, something, there's some hot bait or something or whatever. But like, 
you look at it and it's like, well, it really isn't like fundamentally, it's not that much different from what, you know, it's, it's part of a, a bait family that already exists. And like the, lake at the X same stuff, time, it just crushed. Well, right. And like the you know, Lake X one right? is phenomenal. It's a great like, example. I still, I can't, it's a great example. I can't believe that in, like in the metro area, like ultra, ultra pressured fish, still biting cannibal juniors and fat bastards i mean i mean it's it's tapered down from what it was you know seven years ago or whatever but still it's like i mean i don't know i i don't but want to be throwing it come the down, bus, but it's like doesn't it come down to the point to of top raider yeah doesn't it come down to the point that they just like top water I don't know, man. There's a lot of topwaters that you can fish right next to them, and they're not biting them. Like, they might look at them, but, you know. But, yeah, it's – I do think that you also came off of, like, a, you know, a 10-year reign of the cowgirl in Minnesota. Right, and you had a and you had a huge lapse of people, I think, throwing topwater in general. Right. Like, I mean, right. going back to, like, the Lake X, like, fishing the tournament circuit back then in, like, you know, 2009, 2010-ish, around that time frame. I remember seeing John. That's how I met John. Was fishing tournaments. It was just the guy with the crazy long last name, right? John Cluzza Wissa Wicko, whatever exactly. you know. Yeah, like, you have to everybody's clap. called him Polak, right? I'm like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, a lot he was a clapping. nice guy. You know, talked in there. But you know, you're going out in the tournament. There are zero boats in the field throwing top water, except for this guy. You know, like and like these guys are both throwing top water. You're like, what the hell is going on there? You go, oh, that's kind of weird. And then once you kind of figure out who everybody is, you go in like. They got two fish today? What do you mean they got two fish? There's like 11 fish caught out of 75 anglers or whatever. You know what I mean? Well, top water like, just seemed like a bad – it's just like a low percentage hookup bait. Right, which like is – it's like the then, worst – on paper, it's the worst thing you could throw in a tournament. On paper. It's like you know what I mean? like first, the, no hookups. The first, like, the first six fish I caught on Fat Bastards, like I didn't even know I had a fish on. Like, they just inhaled sudden, it. Yeah, like they would just slurp them. There's like no wake, no explosion. Nope. I'm just like – Up oh. underneath and just – I'm stuck on something here. Oh. <laughs> I, I have I have got weeds or moss, <laughs> and it's fighting me. Um, yeah, incredible. Oh, guys. Oh, I don't know if I can. Can I? I don't know if I can tell this on your on your. Well, podcast. it sounds like you Please. probably do. Can yeah. I oh, would is, love well, it. Heard what does it involve? Is is there mystery and intrigue? Well, <laughs> at, okay, you got to set it up. Ask me? me if I want a beer. Do you want a beer? Ryan, do you want a beer? Does it duck with a boner drag weeds? <laughs> That's from Letter <laughs> Kenny. Oh shit. So my buddy just said that. I'm God, I gotta go. I'm gonna chirp him now. That's, that's an oldie but a goodie. That is. God. That's like but that's like when I was up in uh when we were up in uh, the northwest angle looking at this place. Uh, and the snow, and we had Brody running around. I said, it's pecker deep to a bulldog, and he was just oh, running sure. around. That sounds more organic. Damn it. I knew it was too good to be true. Exactly. I, well, I was just excited that to use something. sounds more other. organic. <laughs> I was just excited to use something other than uh, than uh, does a bear shit in the woods. But <laughs> Right. A little less vulgar, a little more, a little more clever. Yeah, uh, yeah, damn it. All right, well, let's. Right. we're getting close to the end here. i got to ask you guys. I've been asking guys this quite a bit here lately. What was your first musky bait? Oh, what was my first musky bait? Ryan? My first, like, oh, go ahead, Ryan, yeah. Well, I, I was, I, so, I mean, yeah, I don't know if I, like, whatever I purchased or this or that. But one thing I was going to say uh, earlier, or I was going to step in when Jeff was talking about maps number five, that was probably my first uh, like prolific muskie bait. Um, I grew up yep. fishing muskies with my buddy Jim over on Bone Lake in uh, Wisconsin. And it was all like small booker tails, small maps. Um, you know, back then they didn't seem all that small either. They were just, no, and them, you but, caught fish. So who cared? Right. You know, yes. Yeah. And we would throw them, we threw them in the sand over here then too for I mean for a long time and I you know we'll still throw them um, not as much as we probably should but um, yeah I mean that it's hard to make five. that <clears throat> it's hard to make that mental jump even you know back if you'd asked me that ten twelve years ago I wouldn't even thought twice about it and then even this year I'm watching those fish and I was just, it was hard for me to still even do it even though knowing what I know. You know, like, it just like, mm, you know what, this is what we're going to do today, and it's probably going to work. And then, like, it worked, and then it worked several times after, too, you know. But it's just one of those things where you 
you, you see him following, and it's a hard jump, but that's it's such a darn good bait, man. Is it, is it because it's not cool? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think because you're using a spinning rod, so you look like a goofball to, to the uneducated no, person. No, only if and you're reeling really it upside works. down. Um. Yeah, well, then, then you definitely, yeah, then you do. I mean, I have... The spinning rod I have for it is actually I had Kramer Eric Kramer from Kramer Custom Rods build it. It's built on a Legend Elite or whatever the spinning rods. I mean, it's like a five hundred fifty dollar spinning rod, specifically made Mine's to do it to throw maps number fives and Mine's small phantoms and other stuff. Mine's and I'm telling you right now, man, it is it is badass. Like it's just it's great. Well, it's so super light, right? You need a really super light rod for that, especially if you're using little jerk baits or little glide baits and. I I'll want throw, the extra long I'll handle, the extra long handle. Yeah, I just, I think you just get better action with the spinning rod, and then the key yeah, there too is to go down, mm-hmm. you know, drop down the line to like an eight pound equivalent. So eight pound equivalent diameter, so like twenty five pound, you know, suffix or what have you, whatever Power Pro, whatever you want to use. Uh, yeah, and then, and then of mean, course, I... also matching down your leader, right? I mean, I run about a forty pound, tie my own, I tie my own, you know, forty pound, um, like floral leaders, and make that about a about a fourteen inch leader. I just got to get them out away from the boat, you know. I I get that. I got a one of those medium heavy uh, legend elites that'll get them out. You know, it'll whip it pretty good. And that's and the then, other uh, that's the other beauty of the spinning rod too. You can you can get really get it out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm just reeling it in as fast as I can, so it doesn't really matter what the hell's in front of it. it seems like <laughs> sure. as long as it's spinning. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. So what yeah. about so Jeff? What was your first musky bait? I would say, yeah, one of my first prized ones, that map's number five. We kind of stumbled onto that one day. We were actually over on Kentuck Lake back in Tony Grant's heyday there, actually, right about that time. Oh, my God. And uh, when he was up, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Was, and we were out there one day, and we, we hooked ten, and we landed seven oh on God. maps number fours and fives out there. Nobody else was catching anything. In fact, I remember Rick Ray, Ranger Rick coming over to us. We'd caught, we were just four guys in a boat fishing, you know what I mean, like he two caught, kids and two he adults. caught nine. Uh, oh no! And seen thirty, <laughs> and one and he one turned over, into he saw an us eagle. Catch a two, like back to back, and yeah, it turned into an eagle. That sounds Hooks, right. Actually, Hooks were you there? Were you, in, were you in my booth that one day? But uh, that was the first time where we really ever ever pounded muskies on it. And after that, and that was you know I was probably I don't know, maybe thirteen at the time, so you know twenty three, twenty four years ago, whatever. And uh, but it, that was probably one. But my first. The one that I have that's like my prized possession to this day that I have a lot of memories with is a baby hog wobbler, fire tiger. Nice. And I actually threw it this year and caught a fish on it. I should have I should have made a bigger deal about it than I did. It was just like a 36 inch or just a like real good little three footer. Things were really tough. I was thrown behind a, a customer that I was fishing with, um, and he was up front, and I had him throwing a prop bait because it had been a top water bite, and they were blowing up on it pretty good. But it's like oh, I'm just gonna throw this. I haven't thrown this thing in a long time, and it's all the paints basically wore off it, and uh, yeah, you know that that was it, baby hog wobbler. What'd you catch your first musky on, Jeff? My first musky was on a number two meps silver on Catfish Lake, on the Eagle River chain, uh, right off of the point, right off the point with the Indian. There's the Indian on one point, the Eagle on the other, by the big the Omen House, right there. Exactly, was, that's the one where they filmed the movie, right? That's the one where they filmed the movie. Yep, it was. I remember as it was. Yeah, I was uh, Not really. ten years old, nine or ten. What movie is that? The Omen, you <coughs> stupid bastard! Oh, oh. <laughs> the Omen. I thought, yeah, they filmed the, it at that house there. You what's never... the musky horror movie? No, it's not a musky horror movie. It's a great no, movie. No, but there is one. It is. It's, it's... called Blood Hook, and yes, it is awesome thank you, too. Thank you, thank you. Um, because I like really bad movies. Um, mm-hmm. So Blood it's... Hook has muskies in it. They, oh, no, dude. The, 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 Tell them about it, Greg. Tell oh, Mike. Or the is this one Greg killed... is in the process of directing? I'm directing it right <laughs> well, now, Greg actually. Uh, uh, I'm directing it as we speak. No, it's Blood Hook. very low budget. Oh, are you kidding me? It's like it, it's like Blair Witch, like it, Blair Witch, but worse. Oh no, Blair Witch is way better quality <laughs> than Blood Hook. No, it's where the guy kills people with musky lures. Oh, all right, I and like he, it. He casts and kills them. Uh, what is he? What's his? What's his weapon of choice? Oh, it, he changes. Baby he changes. hog wobbler. Baby, Baby hog, hog wobbler with a nine knot, a yes. nine knot wide gap. Yes. Yeah. Uh, by, the, by, the, by the way, uh, you're under uh, uh, suspicion. Um, the uh, yeah, it's it's he kills <laughs> him with various ones because, as we know, 
um, different uh, days, you know, and, and, and light levels and moonrise, moonset and all that. You got to make the shot, man. Yeah, for sure. You got to make the shot. So you got to change when you're you windier know. days. You don't want to be trying to kill somebody with a suic. I mean, that would just exactly. be terrible. You're going you gotta... to kill yourself. I mean, yeah, right. Just, you're going to yeah. have to just upsize. <laughs> yeah. No one wants a suicide on a windy day. So you yeah, know, you definitely need a uh, <laughs> you definitely need a heavy bait. I like it to throw into the wind. Ryan, what was your first muskie on? I want to. Uh, I can't. Uh, whatever, like the one of the smallest Booker tails was. I can't even think of what it was. Uh, five hundred. Seven. Five hundred. Yeah, five hundred probably. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There you go. Well, yep. mine, mine. You know, I grew up completely different area. Mine, and it was probably in a bait that you guys have never heard of, but, and actually, maybe a lot of people listening to this never, a uh, Bill Norman. You know what a Bill Norman is? No, that one I don't know. A Bill Norman. A it's a Bill Norman crankbait. Yep, it's got a heart shaped bill uh, that's metal with a with a with a hollow plastic body, and, and in the south, a Bill Norman and a Hellbender. Um, were really really big baits because so they, is it like a pikey minnow kind of deal no, like no, a jointed no, no, or no? no 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 it's straight and the bill comes straight out you could you can i still throw bill normans today because you can throw no that kidding. thing into a tree and it will come out and not get hung up um i don't care how <laughs> gnarly of a situation it is it rides nose really? nose down and challenge accepted Challenge yeah. accepted. Now we're talking. <laughs> but, That's something that blood hook would not use no, because of the hookup ratios it, would be very not, low. You would have to sharpen the bill. Uh, very tough to get the jugular when you can't get hung up. I have even a lot of witnesses with that one. Exactly. <laughs> I have it take a lot of attempts. I have eaten stuff out of a can, uh, potted meat <laughs> with a Bill Norman bill before. Uh, oh, that's there you go. When I was a kid. So, uh, <laughs> actually, last meat. summer, actually, actually, um, yeah, um, I was, uh, 42, um, when I did that. <laughs> I've been known to eat my tuna packets with the, uh, you know, bucktail blades. That's a pretty sta- pretty much a staple in my boat. So I've, done, I, I I've floss you. with cowgirl, bl- with cowgirl skirts. Daily. There it is. Daily. Floss with cowgirl skirts. I can't there wait to daily. see you. With with flash of blue between your teeth. Oh, I do it daily. Have blue and purple flash of yeah, blue yeah. between your teeth. Daily, people what look at me and they go, "What are you night? doing?" And I go, well, "I got I got stuff on my teeth." And there, it, it, I do it <laughs> daily. Day, I do it every day. So it's it's literally not. That's it, I might awesome. not even be on the water. I just That's got hardcore. Them, I got them hanging so in the house. Uh, I'm gonna just have to do that to mess with. I get some people that are real green in the boat. I'm just gonna start flossing with that, eating oh, my food with my what, ears. I, what, what do you you like like lateral scale? Does that help get those chunks out a little bit more? Do you like just like the mag flash? What do you use? I use whatever I can. I actually ask people on the boat to do it for me. Um, oh boy, there yeah, you go. Because that's I bet not... you they're just fighting over who gets to do that first, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like a car wash. Uh, it's like when you pull out of the like car, car wash. <laughs> It's like when you pull out of the car wash and or the stoplight. When you pull up the stoplight and the Mexican wants to uh, wash your windows. That's exactly very what it specific. is. It's very specific. <laughs> I think huh. Yeah. So what was your what was your first wash. musky bait? What was your first musky bait then, Greg? My first musky bait uh was actually cuz uh down here, I mean, we did not I mean, I've still got my first um, Raleigh and Helen's catalog. Oh, really? Printed wow. by Raleigh. Uh, I got it in 94. And oh, wow. I ordered uh, <coughs> a Suic from it. One, because uh, Suic was a lot of money back then, because I had yep. none. And I, I got that. And my first uh, was a Fire Tiger... Um, the old Fire Tiger Suic, which they still make today, that's not black back but brown. Mm. Oh, sure, like a Miller, yep. like, a like a Miller, a Miller Perch, Perch Fire yep. Tiger, yep. 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 yep, which I still think is one of the best colors uh, oh, that yeah. they make. Agreed. Yeah, it's a good color. <laughs> and how and, big was it? Seven, eight, nine? What was nine. it? Nine, nine, nine inch Suic. Yeah. There it was. I don't even think they had a ten inch. Um, no, I don't. They might not have back then. No, I don't think they had a ten inch then. 
Um, and this was before the days of the thriller. This was, was just... no, this was a thriller. Oh, it was uh, okay. No, and and it, uh, yeah, but no, this one didn't have split rings. Um, it's when they hooked them, you know, directly to the cotter key. Um, and uh, yeah, no, I uh, that was my first one. And but because down here we use a lot of bass baits, you know. I mean, it Which was makes a, sense. Yeah, a, a mm-hmm. lot of bass baits. Um, there was a bill, you know, Bill Norman. Uh, we used the Bill Norman crank baits, the Hellbender crank baits, um, spinner baits. We didn't use anything um, bucktail wise. You know, we didn't have that here. I mean, here pretty much we're used. You were basically taking like Strike King spinner baits, bass baits, and just beefing them up with a trailer hook and a and an extra <clears throat> skirt. So was your home water like growing up when you were a kid when you're talking about fishing? Are you talking about fishing like Cave Run or what what water? Yeah, were you no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. that's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. We fished in Cave Run and we didn't have weeds. Um we never had we you know, we didn't have weeds till probably ninety eight, ninety nine. Just really? meth? Uh just yeah, a lot <laughs> of meth. Um that's kinda when um oxycotton got really cool. Uh, <laughs> kind of in vogue. <laughs> it got in vogue. <laughs> I mean, you could go out and just shake a pill bottle, and that was sort of the you know the the mating call. Uh, Is that where they inspired the rattle trap from? That's how the ra- that's how Tony invented the rattle trap. Was he you know the shaking those? He's like, this sounds great, and um, that's exactly. Yeah, never cut your never cut those open. You don't never, never know what's inside. Of those. <laughs> you yeah. Never you never know what's a yeah. Tony didn't own a you know he'd never own a mirror he'd looked up at. Um, these, uh, <laughs> it was, it was really exciting. Um, but, uh, no, we didn't do that. I mean, I mean, it was all bass stuff. I mean, still, still today, I mean, like top water down here, I mean, yeah, the Lake X and the, the top Raiders and, and stuff like that are always good, but like bass buzz baits, I mean, there's still a ton of fish caught. My first <clears throat> top water fish was a 49 incher caught on a lunker lure, half ounce buzz bait. Uh, sure. fun. and, uh, yeah. buzz baits down here have always been a big deal. And, and even on, I mean, when I fished Mille Lacs, um, years and years ago, back when, you know, there was more than seven in there, um, you know, buzz baits were a huge thing out there. Um, hmm. and even, so, I, mean, I mean, I mean, even Greg, I was, what, 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 what uh, do you I, want? I'm cutting you off here. All right. My hands up. Uh, no, I, I mean, I was, you know, there's obviously like a big, you know, difference in, in baits from, you know, down there and up here. And it, you know, it, it seems pretty regional or whatever, but like I always, to me, you know, like the crankbaits, uh, rattle baits, you know, whatever. Else. I mean, you guys don't have like the bucktail bite, the prop style topwater bait or uh, bite that we have up here. But it, to me, it, the divider in my mind is shad versus, you know, whatever the, the forage of the lake is up here. Right. I mean, we don't have shad up here. I mean, how big of, how big of a difference do you think that makes? I think that is a degree, you know, to a degree, but I also think it is structure. Um, Mm -hmm. I think structure means a lot because, you know, in the spring down here, we have, um, you know, we don't have weeds. Okay, we our weeds generally don't get started to like May. So we have two months of fishing um, without weeds. <coughs> and when you're fishing trees uh, and, and, and stuff, you know, you're fishing baits that need to stay in strike zones a little bit longer. So that's why jerk baits, twitch baits uh, are a little better. Trolling is good because we have massive flats and we also have dirty water. Um, sure. which in Minnesota, you have very little, you know, not as much dirty water, uh, Wisconsin you do. And I, and, and I think it works in Wisconsin. I've seen it. Yeah. Work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, for, sure. for, the, for the guys that do it. And also we have no rod limit, right? I mean, we, we don't have a rod limit down here. I mean, and a lot of your Southern lakes have two to three rods per person where, uh, in you know the northern Wisconsin range, it's one per person up to three people um, for the trolling. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And I and I think that makes a big difference. Um, in the yeah. fall, you know, in the fall we do have a bucktail topwater bite, but it only lasts for about a month and a half, two months at most. 
um, <coughs> because we do have weeds, um, and we do have, um, I guess, prolonged structure. You know, uh, you know, weed beds that extend out. Um, versus a tree that only extends out five to ten feet offshore. Sure. Um, versus a weed bed that extends out, you know, from, you know, uh, you can cast past it, bring it through it. Um, you know, and I, I think structure has a lot to do with it. I don't know if it's as much shad as it is uh, structure and water color. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. Fishing the environment. Right. I mean, and I, I just always, to me, I, I'm always like, Oh, that's like a, I, I look at baits and I'm like, that's like a shad based bait, you know? And, and whatever, like part of it too, is just, you know, I'm sure a lot of like smaller crankbaits and stuff that guys aren't using in Minnesota, like they probably will get bit, you know, it's just guys aren't using them. And they, sure, they and, I, and, I and I think, I definitely think, I definitely think your fish in Minnesota, maybe more so than any of them are definitely a different, there's a different wiring there for sure. You know, like coming from like a Wisconsin and I'm not sure what the genetic is. What your cave run fish, Greg, where are they from? Oh, they're, you know, they're right here. Originally. I mean, they're, they've I mean, always been we, there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, We've got native fish. Okay. I mean, we've got, I wasn't sure if that was like an introduced fishery or, 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 or something. They brought in some other ones to bolster. I wasn't sure. That's no, been no, there. No. We've forever. got, uh, we've got River 17 fish. rivers and streams with native populations. Okay. So those are native to, okay. I didn't know if they had brought sure. in. Okay. Right. No, on. So, I mean, I mean, some of it can just be like, that's kind of how those fish are. Like, I mean, I remember going you know, to Minnesota, like from Wisconsin, coming from like northern Wisconsin in particular. And like the more, you know, it's like just being like, just go throw bucktails, catch 50s. Like, really? That's a thing. You know, like it just, you just, it's up here. It always seems to be like big rubber. I'm not saying big fish aren't caught on blades. They absolutely are. But man, it just never seems, you know, it's always seems to be, you know, top water from time to time or this or that. But you know, up here, a lot of our big fish, and part of it is just a little bit of recency bias with the last, you know, 10, 15 years in that. And, and prior to that, certainly bigger fish were caught on other stuff. But it just it just seemed like no matter how much you threw it at them over there, like, you know, going to fish in something like Vermilion, for example. And I know a lot of the stuff over there, it's speed triggers and all that. But the fact that those fish just still key in on blades the way that they do, it's not that they don't eat other stuff, but it just always kind of amazed me. Like, that was just a, you know, how how – just they just like blades over there a lot of those fish mm-hmm. just seem to like blades i'm not you know even like going back to like you know old musky hunter articles where oh you know throw a rubber in the fall it's like fall what are you talking about i mean i've had banger days from opening day to the end of the season on rubber in northern wisconsin right you know it's just it's not how it is here and i'm, I'm sure you know people have that is certainly like you know now in in recent years here translated over i think there's more guys probably throwing more rubber there and june or july or whatever versus what there would have been 10 years ago and and vice versa you know what i mean but it's it's a um, lot of like you're saying there it's a lot of education uh yep. it's a lot of, amongst the anglers right you know it, what i mean just that that transfer of intel from sure. state to state region to region and people now you got a lot more people that are are travelers right you get the people that are going down i mean you sure. know look, look at a guy I, like yourself i mean how many places have you set up shop and fished man i mean you've, Jesus you've been all over the place I've right you know so it's, it's really a cool deal states. you know I've been, I've been, I've been, been called, an, I've been the, called an asshole. The better question is how many are you allowed to go back to? Right? I have well, been Greg. called a, an asshole in, in several states and two countries. Um, sure. And two is, countries. It is so Greg, are wonderful. You, are you still leading the league in uh, sugar in the gas tank? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've, had my, I've had my tank pump more than anybody. And that's how many times have you said that? and literally. What's the count on that? I got to know. <laughs> Um, it is like, oh, I've had like three. Three times? Yeah. Are you still on a first name basis with the, uh, the tow truck company up in Detroit Lakes? Or? They're very nice people. They're very nice. <laughs> they're you got like very, a punch card system? They're very, that's what I asked them Fourth one time. Fourth one's free. <laughs> so I ask them, I go, can I get a punch card? Um, <laughs> this is, uh, no, I mean, it is, uh, yeah, but eh, what are you going to do? The, what are you going to uh, do? The uh, the thing is, all right, guys, we're getting a little long winded here, but uh, I tell you, Jeff, hey, buddy, yes, I sir. really appreciate you coming on here. Uh, well, anytime, man, I enjoy talking to you guys. It's really good to sit down and talk about these years. Swapping all the gears here, get done. We've got the ducks switching at the ice fishing, looking forward to the show season, and uh, and of course, you know, the upcoming musky season next year. So I appreciate you having me on, Greg. Thanks a lot. No problem. Well, hey, guys, we're going to be at the musky shows. Musky Hunter's going to be there. I am still the owner of Musky Hunter. Um, 
you know, no. <laughs> legally, there's a legal battle going on here. I need Perry Mason and Matlock to to uh, to figure this shit out. But uh, I guess that's all I'm legally allowed to say. I don't even know what I'm allowed to say anymore. Uh, but uh, if anyone ever asks, uh, yes, me and Tony are the owners of Muskie Hunter. Muskie despite Hunter, other claims. Despite other claims, whatever. <laughs> me and Tony Grant are the owners of Muskie Hunter Magazine. So if you want to call anyone an asshole, please direct it to me. Um <laughs> <laughs> or your lawyer or yeah whatever i anymore it's, it's, counsel. it's just one of those deals um but yes uh ryan anything you want to say there bud i don't know man i think we covered it pretty well i mean it's always good to talk to jvr uh you know enjoyed talking to you buddy at, me? at shows for years man you know yeah, uh, Greg, I, looking forward to this year too yeah well greg so get to get the band back together yeah, for sure, for sure. But uh, no, I I get to talk to Greg enough in the fall when we're fishing in the same area. So That's super I don't know. Rude. We'll give it another <laughs> month or two, and that'll be excited to talk to Greg. But... That'll be good. <laughs> Me too. Me too. I'm gonna it's teach. Bro- I'm gonna thing. teach it's Brody how to thing. bite. Attack. <laughs> oh. Uh, tell him not to let him into Zorba's anymore. Then exactly. Exactly. He's a party animal. But he uh, is. All right, guys. Well, hey, you guys have a. Uh, a good night, a good Christmas, and, uh, yeah, I'll talk to you later. Merry Christmas, fellas. Merry Christmas, All right, see you, folks.